Now what you've noticed by now is that I really like to annotate the code segments and capture how we should reason about those code segments by inserting the proof into the code segment itself. So let's have a look at how we can do this for the if command. Back to our example, and I guess I went back to just saying that the post condition is that z is equal to the absolute value of x. Let's give ourselves some space. Here we have that same command, but with the precondition and post condition filled in, and then the guards nicely spread out from where the uh, commands are, the guarded commands are, so that we can annotate this code segment with various insights in form of predicates. And what do we get? Well, first of all, we know where R must be true. After each of the guarded statements, R must be true. So we can fill that in. Similarly, we know immediately after you check each of the guards, Q and that guard must be true. And you can fill that in. That's just a matter of filling in what you know. So next, we focus on the guarded statements. What do we know? Well, let's just look at the first one. We know that after it is executed, if it's executed, R must hold. We therefore know that the weakest precondition as 0 R must hold right before it. And we know how to compute that because we know how to compute the weakest precondition of simple assignment. It's a matter of replacing every occurrence of z with x. So we can fill that in. And we can do the same thing for the second guarded command. Okay, so what do we know next? Well, now we can ask the question, is it the case that q and g0 implies the weakest precondition of s0r? And, um, well, you can kind of reason through that, or you can take out a piece of scrap paper and actually work through it. But the answer is yes. Similarly, you can look at Q and G1. You can ask the question, does that imply the weakest precondition of S1 leaving you in a state where R is true? And again, you can either whip out a piece of paper and work through that, or you can just eyeball it and indicate that the answer is yes. The one thing we forgot to check was whether Q implies that one of the guards is true, and the fact is we probably should have done that first. So we asked that question here at the top, and that's a matter of asking whether true implies that X is greater than or equal to zero, or X is less than or equal to zero, and from algebra you know that that's true as well. So here we've presented checking whether an if command is correct as a matter of filling out a worksheet. And this is going to become a recurring theme throughout the course. We like to organize our thoughts in terms of worksheets where we systematically work through the various steps. So if you then take away this specific example, what you're left with is a worksheet that you can fill out every time you run into an if command that involves two guards.